You bless them. You help them. But friends help each other. Friends are interested. How many of your neighbors' names do you know? <laughs> do you know their wife's name, their husband's name, their children's name? Do you know their birthdays even? And I'm going to go on to my next point. We do not only uh, 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 make the invisible visible through te our testimonies alone, not just through our friendship, but through our giving, our generosity. Amen? Someone might be praying that their rent might be paid. Someone might be praying that they, are, uh, 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 they will get a lift, that they will, they will, they, their shopping will be done for them when they are sick. And it's a friend that can do that. Do you know that they are going through that? Do you know that they are... They need your help. Now, I want to encourage you. Get to know their birthdays. Buy them a good card, not the, the one punch of cards. Amen. <laughs> Take them out for a meal. Take them to a posh restaurant. Get their shirt size. And their, and their, but buy them a good shirt. That is what Jesus Christ will do for us. Amen. He was generous. He loved people. He didn't just preach, you know. At some point, the disciples came to him and said, send these people away, it's a bit late. He said, you feed them. <laughs> you feed them. Feed them. It's going, to, it's going to cost us this many months' wages. He said, you feed them. He said, when the rubber hits the road, <laughs> these are the sort of things that we have to do. Make the gospel practical. Amen? Love people unto salvation. Love people unto the faith you proclaim through your giving, through your acts of kindness, because that is what Jesus Christ will do. And finally, when you preach the gospel, don't condemn them. Preach forgiveness. Amen? Preach grace. Preach mercy, because that is what God has given us. He's been gracious to us. He has brought us in. He didn't look at our sins. Of course, if you look at our sin, but he did something about our sin by sending his one and only son, Jesus Christ, who suffered, he died. But praise the Lord, he rose again. He rose again. And he accepted us. So let's preach forgiveness. God willing, next week, we'll touch on some practicalities, folks. Now for now, let us go. Let us go and love people. Let's go and cherish people. Let's go and bless. But as I'm speaking, Perhaps you know, you've been thinking about that neighbor, you've been thinking about that friend that you've just been uh, um, hungry. They don't even know that you're a Christian. Why don't you bother your life for that a minute or so before we go? Let's just pray and ask God to enable us. This is not to make you feel guilty. This is just to highlight the fact that there are people out there who need your help, who need to see the light of God in you. That those who are blind and they are looking for someone to lead them to the light. Don't underestimate the work that Christ has done in your life. Don't ignore the power of God in you. When was the last time you prayed for that friend or even your own child? When they, sent, when they said they were ill, did you ask them to call the GP or to pray? That the power of God will be demonstrated in your own life for them to see that power in your life as well. Making the invisible visible. Hallelujah. Shall we stand? Father, we've, uh, we've listened to your word and You've given us an example in your precious word. You desire nothing but sincerity. There are areas that we are weak. There are areas that we, we are ignorant and we need your help, O God. We need your power and the demonstration of your power. Father, speak to us as individuals. And also speak to us as a church. That we will just know your heartbeat. Your heartbeat is for the lost. Of course it's for us. But having saved us, oh God, you want us to bring others to you. Because you've been good to us. As we reach out, oh God, give us the courage.
take away our fears. Help us to knock down our barriers and let those who are outside our churches come in. And when they come, precious Lord, give us the grace and the strength to love them, to cherish them, and to teach them, to disciple them, and to release them to bring others unto you. But I know that in this hall, there are people with problems. And I pray, oh Lord, that because of your time here, when you give them a breakthrough, because they, they came this morning, Father, would you give them a breakthrough? Let them come and testify that the Lord touched them. When they left this building, they went into receiving answers to their prayers. Whatever their need might be, nothing is too big for you, yes. nothing is too small for you. But the fact that they've been here worshiping you, listening to your word, let them go into the fulfillment, into the answer to their prayers. Father, we love you, we bless you, and we honor you. No matter what challenges might be ahead of us this week, we entrust ourselves unto you, knowing and believing that you answer our prayers. You listen to our prayers and you answer our prayers. Because we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming. And I look forward to seeing you on Tuesday and throughout the week. God bless.